So happening in your neighborhood, lots to talk about. Rebecca Blackburn, co-founder of the Pet Station Country Club, and Jennifer Smith of Grand, am I saying correct? The Grand enough? Yes, <laughs> Golden Retriever Rescue and Adoption a Needy Dog. All right, and Pam is also here to talk with us today. And we, who is this, first of all? This is the star of this segment right now. That's Norman. Norman, what kind of dog is Norman? He is a Great Pyrenees. Beautiful. And he was abandoned. And Grand came to the rescue. Wow. So what do you all do here in the community? Uh, well, we rescue dogs. Yeah. Um, we've been around for 25 years, and we're all volunteer organization. We started out with mainly golden retrievers, but we have expanded to other breeds as well. Um, and so we take in normally a couple hundred dogs every year. Wow. Um, and then try to get them adopted out into two homes. And... Um, that's what we do. Norman is just so well behaved. It's incredible. Um, so Rebecca, you guys are uh, teaming up with yeah. uh, with Grand for a special cause. Kind of tell us about that. Well, we're actually partnered up, partnered up with businesses. Um, we opened our Vinecrest location in August, and we actually. Um, we, we were connected through a mutual friend of ours who knew our goal to expand our Pet Station Country Club and their goal was to um, get more assistance with like land maintenance and help with the volunteers and stuff. They were, they were gifted the land from Miss um, Ellen Wesley and they quickly realized that the volunteer work was almost, it was almost too much to maintain the land and to maintain the upkeep of the like volunteers and stuff. So. Uh, Nina reached out to us, she's the president of Grand, and uh, we met up and talked about how we could work together in a partnership. And so they had the land, we built the building, and we take care of their dogs so that they can focus on adopting and rescuing while we make sure their dogs are fed and watered wow. and taken care of. Because, yeah. I mean, it, it takes a community, right, it to sure help does. These, uh, yeah. these animals because not one organization can nearly do it themselves. Right. Not to the level that yes. they want to they, do it. And, so. and that they need. Yeah. 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 So that's and been we a really great wanted to focus on rescuing. Um, we were very grateful for the land that was donated to us, but we just quickly found out that it was too much for our volunteers and we were just needed needed some assistance so we could really focus on what we were good at, which was rescuing dogs. So have you all seen um, an increase um, uh, with pets needing homes lately? Yes, um, and with, with the pet station, we're able to actually intake more dogs. So we have more kennel space. We used to rent kennel space. We have more kennel space than mm -hmm. we had in the past. We also have some quarantine uh, kennels, so we can take in puppies. Um, so it's just allowed us to bring in more dogs. Um, we do rely a lot on fosters, so we really like foster homes. Mm -hmm. Once we get the dogs in, sort of evaluated, then we like to get them out into fosters. So How important is that? that people realize that the dogs kind of be fostered in between transitioning? It's huge. And Pam is a, mm -hmm. a past foster. Yeah. Um, so yes, they can, they can work with them, say they have never really walked on a leash. So mm -hmm. they can walk or they can work with them on leash skills. Maybe they're not house trained. <laughs> they can you know, help with that. So it really helps understanding the dog, what their needs are and what to be worked on in order for the dog to be adopted. So Norman, I know if you all are just joining us now, Norman did find a home, right? <laughs> he yeah. was, that, Pam was fostering. Uh, Pam was fostering. Yes. Yes. Right, yeah. yeah. So what does that feel like to have a dog like Norman in your home and then know that it's found a permanent home? It's great. My husband and I have fostered quite a few dogs through the years. Um, and um, you have to go into it with the mindset that your goal is to help that dog. Mm -hmm. As a foster, your goal is to understand that dog, what their needs are. Um, for Norman, um, he fit in with our family, mm -hmm. and we were familiar with the great peer breed, so it's it's a very happy ending for us and for Norman. And to okay. know, I, I mean, it takes a lot of work too, yes. right? Yes. It's because it's some of these dogs may come from uh, situations where they're abandoned or they've been through some type of uh, traumatic situation. Mm -hmm. So it really mm -hmm. takes a patient person right. to give them the care and love that they need. So how is you mentioned, um, Rebecca, that you all were teaming up and doing this? What else are you doing to kind of help these dogs and help the organization. Yeah, well, it's really exciting because they do go from either abandoned or just, you know, they 
have been returned back from other places and so they get to come into our facility and get treated just like our clients do in upscale pet resort so they get their um, potty breaks and their plays and they get you know the food and water in a facility that kind of helps them to transition from where they were into going mm -hmm. to a foster place. A positive place a positive so that place. Mm -hmm. the yeah. transition becomes easier. Right. So you all have been around for quite some time. You're mm -hmm. growing too in the community yeah. Yeah. Um, and you were talking a little bit about that. Yeah and this kind of fulfills our part of our mission is to be part of the you know community here not just be a business but to give back to the community and with the humans and the dogs so this really helps to fulfill that part of our mission getting to team up with a nonprofit like Grand. So how can folks help Grand out if those of you are watching you see Norman and you want to help a beautiful dog like him out what are you asking folks to do? Well we can always use volunteers so you can go to grand.org and um, on our website we have volunteer forms to fill out we can also um, obviously use people to or have people come in to adopt and so adoptions are great um, so if they can go out and and yeah, there's our website right there um, <laughs> go out and um, look at the adoption application we do have a whole process around adopting we just don't adopt a dog out sure so we have an application that needs to be filled out that's screened um, Pam actually works mm -hmm. through that process as well. Then we have people that will go do home visits, mm -hmm. just talk to you, try to find out what it is you're really looking for, and then really match a dog with you. If for some reason it doesn't work out, we want the dog back. And then we would start that process again with the dog or maybe work on something that we found out mm -hmm. that may need some work on. Um, and then eventually you would work with our adoption coordinator. Um, she's actually one of our founders, has mm -hmm. been around since the very beginning in 1996. Huh. Um, and then she would work with you to match you with the right dog. And um, what would happen to these dogs if we couldn't get them into the right hands? Well, we do work a lot with uh, shelters in Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. We're actually regional. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have volunteers in, those in Lexington and Cincinnati as well. Um, and a lot of them will be would be euthanized. That's sad. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we get calls where they're about ready to put some down. We also take in hoarding cases, mm -hmm. um, as well as we don't turn dogs down for medical needs. Um, and so we do a lot of fundraising because we have a lot of vet expenses. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but so yeah, it, it could be any of those areas. And folks can donate. Um, yes, I'm sure on absolutely. your website I find out how to do that since we talked yes. about all the work that you do because I can't imagine putting such a sweet, sweet boy like Norman. I mean, he's just adorable. He's so yeah. well behaved. You did good, Pam. When you bring a dog in, you mentioned patience. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. key. And then you start to learn about the dog and mm -hmm. then you start to work with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a mutual, it's, it's the yes. uh, pet owner being trained and the dog being Absolutely. trained. It's, it's a lot going yes. on. So, yeah. And we yeah. also have a follow-up team. Great. So you're not left you know, by yourself. If you have questions, we have people that would follow up with you after adoption. And we're starting to put some other other things in place yes, as we well yeah, for right. questions after the fact. I, yeah. As a new dog mom, I, I'll say there's nothing like coming home after a long day and seeing your, your dog just looking at you, just happy to see you. You know, right. just oh, always, yeah. it's the best feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. yes. So, yes. 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 Thank you for the work that you all are doing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank um, you. If you want to get folks one more time, where can they get more information? Grand.org, G-R-R-A-N-D.org. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Yeah. And if you adopt and you need a vacation <laughs> or boarding or grooming or training, the Pet Station Country Club or thepetstationinc.com. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Well, coming up on Wave